morning. Um, you're welcome to the second day of our orientation. Before we start, we'd like to have an opening prayer from one of our new students. Anyone at all in the spirit, just give us a prayer. Please show by hand who would like to do that for us. Oh, our point. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Majestic Father, this afternoon we bless your name. We thank you for once again another successful day and bright morning. We ask that this moment we call for your presence in our midst. We ask that may you come and take control and release any activity that will be ongoing here. We pray that when everything comes to an end, we won't forget to say thank you. There's so many other blessings we ask in Jesus' name, we pray and spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So to kick start, like I said, it's the second day of our orientation, so we won't waste much time. For those of us here and those of us who have joined us online, uh, it's going to be a brief, a brief session. Um, before we start, I'd like us to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Boydi with a round of applause. Please acknowledge his presence. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Miss Hazel is also in our midst. You'll get to know her by the end of the day. Please, a round of applause as we acknowledge her. Mr. Anta is also in our midst. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. As the others join, we'll definitely acknowledge them. So the very first thing on our list for today, we are inviting Mr. Anta to give us an introduction and also about the facilities and resources of the University of Ghana Library System. With a round of applause, let's welcome Mr. Anta. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Um, thank you so much once again um, for this opportunity. For this opportunity of um, taking you through the second day of the um, orientation. Um, it is my singular pleasure to also once again welcome you to the School of Law. Because I know that it's not been that easy for you to be here, but you've been able to make it. And I need to congratulate you very much for this achievement. Would you appreciate yourself by just, by just clapping for yourself for, 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 for making it to, to this school? Yes. Um, yesterday, um, I listened to the one of the um, presenters and the presenter talked about the fact that your training here um, starts with the LLB and then you proceed to um, you proceed to the you proceed to the professional level and he described some of the difficulties that await you um, I think it was very, 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 very intimidating. But I can assure you that if you adopt the library as a friend and you develop an intimate relationship with it, you have your peace. You'll be able to make it easily. I'm saying this from experience and from the fact that um, 
from all the first class students that we've had, they've all been very, very, very active users of the library. And I believe that if you develop that habit, you will also get there. Today, my business is to take you through the information sources and resources that we have in the school, which we use to equip you for your training and your quest for legal education. But one most important thing is that um, if you don't apply yourself to what we tell you, in other words, the skills that we um, impart to you are skills that you need even in your practice. They are skills that will support you wherever you are as a lawyer. So you have to be very careful and you have to be very attentive as well. My name is Joe Anta. I'm a law librarian or a law library practitioner. And it falls to me, like I said, to take you through uh, the resources that we have in the library based on your information needs. Normally, I start with a quotation, one quotation and another from Franklin Williams. The first quotation says that our very life is predicated on our ability to learn. And then Glavin Williams, in a book that will be re recommended very soon to you, also says that lawyers do not know much more than others, but it is because they know where to find it. It is because they know how to find the information that they are looking for. What makes using the library very important for you? is the fact that if you become conversant with how to use the library effectively, or even how to use books effectively, this will help you to know how you can access information easily, easily. Because as a lawyer or as a student who is studying to become a lawyer, you need how to access information timely because you need to be meeting deadlines, deadlines for your assignments, even as a lawyer, deadline for your addresses and things that you do, you have to meet clients, et cetera. And if you know how to access information or how to even take information from a book, my brother, my sister, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are already gone. So I will start by giving you global overview or the global picture of the University of Ghana Library system. The University of Ghana Library system is made up of about 30 constituent libraries, making up of hall libraries, departmental libraries, um, libraries for certain campuses like a uh, city campus, et cetera, et cetera. Now, all these libraries come together to share a common union catalog, which you can access even on your phone and in all the libraries. The idea here is that as a student, you qualify to study in any of these libraries, whether here, geography, archeology, span biochemistry, Noguchi, you name it. Or even outside this campus, you go to the acrostic campus, you can access their books there. Of course, there are some of these libraries that also have um, wonderful law collections. So as you navigate, you use the um, union catalog that I'm talking about, which is represented as the OPAC. You will see that all these libraries are available 
for you to use. There are databases, et cetera, et cetera. Now, before I talk about the University of Ghana library system, which I've just introduced, I would like to briefly um, talk about the um, old library and then our new library here. And then I go back to continue with my talk on the University of Ghana library system. We have an old library, which is located at our old place. We used to be at the old place before we moved here, many years back in the, in the recent past. Now, that library has materials, but we don't go there often because we operate what we call closed access um, how do you call it? We, we, operate, we operate it on closed access basis. And what happens is that when a material is referred to by a lecturer, all we have to do is to go there and fetch it for you, or we go there with you to fetch it. But we, at the same time, make sure that we have a lot of the materials here at the new um, site. But for purposes of um, making it known to you so that in case you have to go there and fetch a material, I have taken shots of it, which I will show um, shortly. But before that, the School of Law itself was established in 1959. That is 11 um, years after the University of Ghana has been established. That's in 1948. And it started within the BAM Library. I know, at the, at the west wing of the library, where, where it started. By then, it was known as the Department of Law. But somewhere along the line, the name was changed to Faculty of Law. And then it moved here in the um, 70s. Now, the mandate of the school at the time, or the faculty at the time, which is now a school, was to train um, law students at the LLB level, and then they continue further at the uh, professional level. So the story has not basically changed. It's the same thing. Now, talking about the um, law library, about the um, BAM library. Okay, let me show you. This picture is now coming. This is the old um, law premises. This place is close to the Department of Archaeology. You know, when you come from the main gate to make a right, you go all the way down. This is the old site. And the, the um, old library is the building you see um, sinking over there, you know, as a, as like a, a sinking ship. Then on the flanks are two parallel blocks, which used to serve as the classrooms and offices of um, lecturers. So that is where we have some of the materials that um, we think you don't need on day-to-day -day basis. But anytime you want it, we take you there and give it and pick it for you. This is the new building, and this is the entrance to the new library. I believe that some of you may have visited this um, library. How many people have seen this library? How many people have visited the library so far? Oh, yes, that's very good. That's very good. That's very, very good. I'm impressed. I'm so much impressed to see that at least somebody has visited the library. Now, the, I believe that some of you may have already identified some of the food joints and things around, but not, not, not the library. But I tell you, as a law student, everywhere you go, please make sure that you notice where the library is and even the contents of the library. From here, we will go there. That's why I even refer to my orientation as law library orientation series, because we start one here and then we go and continue over there after this session, where I'll get the opportunity to run you through the various 
collections we have, the law reports, the legislation, so many things that we have over there for you. Now, the study of law, like I, I started by saying, is a, it's an intensive library-based activity which requires discipline. Now, it requires discipline because even those of us who organize the library for you, we make sure that based on your information needs, we organize the materials in such a way that when you come there, you are able to access materials that we need easily. For example, when you come in there, you see our display cabinet right by the uh, left side of the library where we display new materials that we acquire immediately. We bring that immediately to the um, awareness of um, students, simply because we know that as the law grows, new materials are published day and, day and night. And once we get a new publication, we have to make it available to you. And then also, you realize that all the legislation that we have, the Acts of Parliament, the executive instrument, et cetera, et cetera, are just by the entrance Sim for, sim for the simple reason that these are primary materials that you need to access easily. Anytime you need to access them, you have to access them easily. And then we have the law reports. And then we have the encyclopedias. And then we have the other reports that you need. In fact, we have arranged the library following the discipline that I'm talking about in such a way that you'll be able to access materials easily. At the same time, we also make sure that you um, are allowed to make maximum use of the library. So our opening times are flexible. Even weekends, we are here, and we make sure that you use the place comfortably, even late into the night. And this is the University of Ghana um, BAM Library, which is the um, central library to all the other libraries that I have mentioned. Now, we talk about the services and the uh, contents of the BAM library. We have, the BAM library has a collection size of about 400,000 volumes of materials, which is touted as one of the biggest, if not the biggest libraries in West Africa. And this library, like I said, serves as a central library to all the other satellite or branch libraries that I mentioned um, earlier on. For example, we have Med, um, School of Medicine, we have Biochemistry, we have Physics, Chemistry, and all of them. We in law specialize in law collections. And for a very good reason, all of us, all the satellite libraries or branches libraries support the central library governance. They, we have an university librarian who oversees or has oversight responsibility over all the activities of the uh, branch or specialized libraries. Now, we talked about the uh, various or the constituent libraries. If you open this, um, page or you get this interface, you, you get most of the libraries. And the beautiful thing here is that when you are searching for information, if you are able to identify the library that has built a collection, you know, that is relevant to your needs, you just click on it or tap on that library and then you, you just go straight and then access the information that you need from the um, from that library. If you don't want that, then you just use the OPAC to just search. There are a lot of uh, access points which I'll be explaining in due course to you on how you can access materials. Now, the various units of the BAM library or the University of Ghana library system. First, we have bindery or restoration unit. 
Now, what this um, unit is responsible for is to restore your books. If you have, if you, even if you have personal books that are worn out, and for some reasons you want it to be restored, they are there, they will do that for you. Of course, all the libraries around where they have uh, books that are falling apart, we send them there for restoration. Then we have digitization. Digitization unit is also there. If you have a material that you want to upload onto the um, open access, the institutional repository of the university, you have to send it there. It will be digitized and uploaded. Apart from that, the university has institutional repository, which we'll be talking about very soon, which is an open access database. Materials that um, faculty members have produced are all digitized and displayed over there so that the thesis and the, um, uh, the projects, reports, everything of the university that must be accessed digitally are processed there and uploaded accordingly. Then cataloging. Now, this is a unit of the library over there at the BAM library. And this service is also replicated here and, of course, replicated in all the uh, branch libraries that I've talked about. This unit prepares the, the books, you know, processes all the materials acquired. And they give the books uh, what I call a coded information, which is normally put on the spine of the book. At least, if not for anything at all, they have to um, create this information which they put on the spine of the book for um, users. So when you come to our library also, all our books have um, spine labels. Quite apart from that, every book has a bibliographic information, like the you know, author, the uh, title of the book, the place of publication, et cetera, et cetera. This is the unit that you know, um, processes this um, stuff. Now, it is a call mark that helps you to locate materials placed on the shelves. And this is what happens in all the libraries, in all the libraries. Circulation, after the materials have been processed, they have to be circulated. How are they circulated? They have to, um, they have to make sure that users or students like you who have access to the material are able to loan them or borrow them and then go and use for um, a period. At the moment, I think the BAM library, as an undergraduate, you, you qualify to borrow four books for two weeks, after which you can renew it for another two weeks. But these materials can be recalled at, at any time. And any time it is recalled, you have 72 hours to just return these materials um, to the BAM library. Of course, we also have materials here, which I'll be talking about very soon, but our reference, our library is a reference library. We don't permit borrowing or lending. Now, e-resources. Now, the University of Ghana library system has a lot of e-resources, databases, journals, so many things that you can access. There are so many books under ProQuest that we cannot even count. And so if you are able to register, you get your registration credentials, you'll be able to access all these materials easily. Now, braid products for disabled students or disability use. Now, the BAM library has a unit that has braid products. And these products are normally for the visually impaired students. Anytime they need to use a material, they have to get there. Unfortunately for us, we have not built our library. We've not built capacity for that. We don't have resource people and even the resources to support pro-disability use. But I know with time, we are going to acquire those services. So, if you have a challenge and you have to meet that challenge, you must, be, you must go to the BAM 
library. Then the BAM library has the University of Ghana library system, even though located there has research commons, which is available to all students, especially graduate students. Now, this is a place where faculty meet and exchange ideas with graduate students. They discuss you know, academic issues, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have knowledge commons. Knowledge commons is also for um, undergraduates, where they also meet, they you know, discuss things with uh, lecturers, et cetera, et cetera. But before you make use of these facilities, you have to book online for, 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 for access. You have to um, you know, place a request for that. Otherwise, you may go there and somebody else may have booked it. Now we have electronic um, support um, services over there. Of course, we have also one here. This is a place where if you have a challenge with your laptop, you know, any handheld um, device that you think has a problem, you can uh, seek for assistance over there and they can help you. Our own ICT, which I'll be talking about very soon, is also here to help you when you have such needs. Of course, there's 24 hour um, facility you know, just by the roadside. This is a place where you can study for 24 hours, any time of the day, any time of the night, you can just access it, read your head off and, and, and anything at all you want to do. Then there are conference facilities, conference facilities also over there. We also have university archives, which I have to draw your attention to. As a law student, as an up and coming lawyer, you might want to make or conduct historical searches. The archives is there. If you go there and they are unable to get what you are looking for you, they can um, contact the National Archives for you and other places where you can access the information you are looking for. Now, having talked about the units, they also have service products. And I would want to talk about the service products or some of the service products available in some of the um, units that I've mentioned. We have the um, UG CAT. The UG CAT is just the University uh, of Ghana catalog. I mentioned, remember that I mentioned that we have a union catalog. A catalog is just um, any arranged material you know, which has bibliographic details of the information on the book that you are looking for. And it provides you with access points. In, I believe in your secondary schools, you may have that big box, which is now a museum piece when we talk about the investing, because we no longer use those things. But perhaps in your secondary schools, you may have those boxes where you pull out the you, there are small drawers, you put, you put the drawers out and then you flip through the um, cards to help you get the order of a, of a book um, and other details of a book, after which you copy the information there and then go to the um, shelf where you can retrieve the material that you have um, identified. Now we don't use that again, we have online access. So we have the uh, UG catalog. Now, even on your phone. If you just log onto the page, you can see it, you can navigate and have access to so many materials that I've talked about. I cannot talk about how you can search information using the um, UG catalog intimately now, but over time we will do that because we don't just search information, but there are steps, there are techniques, there are principles that we use to search information. For example, we use truncation, wild um, cards and so many other you know, um, techniques to access, inf even Boolean, Boolean operators. And you are looking for information, how to use a conjunction and how to use a, dis a, a disjunction or and so many other techniques which we can learn later when you come to the library. We are doing all these things because we want you to be conversant. We want you to equip yourself with how you can access knowledge or information easily. And like I told you earlier on, 
if you are able to master the skills now, wherever at all you go, whether in any public library or any, in any even international law library, you go to Harvard, you go to Yale, Cornell, Alfred, any, for the, any of the, invest, the principles are just the same. Even in your, in your own law firm library, if it's properly organized, the, the, the techniques are just the same. And it, it helps you to flow, to, to, to get much within a little time. That's why we take the trouble to take you through. So those of you who are interested, we will conduct um, um, further exercises in the library for you to know how to um, use um, such skills effectively. Then um, we have the UG space. The UG space is the institutional repository now that I mentioned earlier on. And it is an open access platform where all, I mean, manner of information which has been generated within the University of Ghana have to be uploaded there for access. Now, this um, platform increases the global visibility of publications of the university. It enhances um, research you know, um, practices. And those who put their information there are able to attract users, are able to uh, make their um, bibliographies searched and they are contacted, et cetera, et cetera. Now, even if you have something that you even want to upload, it is the institutional repository which has to do it for you. And this can be done by taking it to um, digitization unit of the BAM library, as I've said earlier on, and it will be done for you. Then we have off-campus access. Now, this helps you, for example, to even continue your research activities after you have gone home or after you've even traveled outside Accra. If you have the appropriate um, access credentials, which have been or may have been authenticated, once it is authenticated, you can access our materials anywhere at all you are or you find yourself. Of course, if um, you have done all that, you've created the barcode access, you have your student's ID and number and all the other details, and still you have a problem, our ICT unit is available to um, help you. And then, we have um, A to Z databases, like I mentioned. Databases are just a collection of related information. So you have uh, peer reviewed journals, you have um, articles in uh, you know, uh, uh, periodicals and so many things that have been put together. We have e-books e and you can access all these materials digitally once you have been able to register with, with us. Now we have ask, ask, ask a librarian, also platform. Now this platform gives an opportunity to interact with um, librarians or lib guide developers, subject librarians, etc., etc. You engage in live chats. Sometimes I'm there myself, people ask questions and I have to answer them. If you have the time, you can just log into it and then you ask questions, engage any librarian at all of your choice and your questions will be answered. And then we have research guides. Now, Richard, research guides are aggre aggregated tools, aggregated online tools, which have been put together to facilitate research. What I mean here is that when you go online, there are so many uh, links and so many um, you know, things that if you as an individual have to search through, you take a longer time. So each subject has a subject librarian. For example, I do that for law and I've created um, a very wonderful lib guide which I will show in due course. Each subject librarian has to create, put together all online resources that that person thinks will be relevant to his users. 
So in my case, for example, I have been able to put together laws from other countries, world constitutions, and so many other things that are even educational institutions. I have been able to put them together. You see our law school, um, Harvard, Yale, Cornell, all the law schools have been able to put them together so that when you are reading and you think of visiting, let's say, Harvard Law Library, you just go there and it's a one-stop shop. Not only that, but so many other things. Of course, I've not updated it lately, but I'll go and update it. So that is what a LibGuide um, is, and that is what it is meant for, to create a one-stop shop for all um, types of information that will be you know, determined as relevant to the needs of the people who use the um, library or the services of the library. Then we have um, electronic books. I've talked about that. And then search all databases. Search all databases provide a bigger platform that when you log on into that, you are able to search a whole lot of things. We'll be talking about that later. And then article requests. The University of Ghana library system cannot subscribe to all the articles in the world. So when a user, let's say you are looking for a particular article, which after having said the databases you cannot find, you have to submit a request to the system that, that there, is, there is something which has been done in that respect. You have to submit a request and you give them time and they will fetch the information and send it back to you. Past questions, past exam questions. We, we have past exam um, questions. We have it here. We have some online. And then the University of Ghana um, um, library system, also at the BAM library, has all manner of past questions. Sometimes you can even request by the maybe name of the uh, lecturer. But ours here, for good reasons, we, we have not put everything there. So most of our past questions are physical. I mean, you come to the library and access them. You are going to be lawyers and you have to know certain things. And you, you realize that you, we, don't, we don't necessarily do things the way others do them for obvious reasons. Then we have a software installation. There are certain softwares which you have to use. For example, we have Mendeley and EndNotes. Some of you may be um, familiar with this already. Mendeley and EndNotes are content management softwares. They help you to manage the contents of um, journals that you have read. So if you've read a journal and you want to um, save it, you want to save the uh, references, etc., cetera, the um, software, is these softwares, help you to um, save those things. And once you have an account, you can download, you can do everything. You can even go there and they'll install it on your laptop for you, which you can use for your research activities. Then research common rooms, I think I have talked about that already. And then uh, this is an example of a lib guide. I created this some time ago and there are so many things there that you can, you can um, use. Of course, I have to update it. The, the, the laws of Ghana, so many things, the constitution of so many things I have put um, out there, I have uploaded and, and linked them, link them to the various uh, sites. So you click on something here, it takes you to another place. It's just to prevent you from you know, roaming around. You know, it creates a one-stop shop for you, for all your... Uh, legal needs. Of course, if you assess something that which you think uh, is not tasteful or which you think you know should not be there, you can draw my attention, my address, my contacts, and other things are there. And then the library catalog, the one I just spoke about. This is a picture of it. You can see people, you know, gathered around it. They are just picking the um, um, references to the information that they need in order to follow up to the. Um, library shelves and pick um, them or to any of the libraries to access those materials. And then School of Law Library, yes. Now we have come home. 
this is our own library. Like the dean was saying the last time, the University of Ghana aims to provide legal, the best legal education in Africa. Of course, we follow that vision. And we also want to be the best law library and preferred legal research center in the whole of Africa. And we are also working towards that in, in, in support of the teaching uh, of law, learning of law, and then research in law. Now, resources of the library. Normally, our resources are based on Article 11 of the 1992 Constitution. It is one such provision that I think some of you will be um, stepping it, you will be stepping into very soon. Article 11 just talks about the sources of law in Ghana, it talks about the constitution, enactment, rules, and regulations, um, gazettes, executive instruments, legislative instruments, et cetera, et cetera. Then it talks about the the common law, and then the Ghana common law, and then customary law. So once you have these sources, it means that we have to build our collections, our activities, our operations on Article 11 of the 1992 Constitution. And of course, there are other pieces of legislation which also inform our work or influence our work. For example, we have the Copyright Act, that's Act, Act um, 690. You know, that informs when we are making photocopies there, what, what you should photocopy from and what you should not. The, the scope of the, of the photocopy that you have to make, um, which is referred to as the um, fair use. You know, the Americans call it fair use, the uh, British call it uh, fair dealing, you know. Now we have um, the Copyright Act informing that, of course, we have the uh, Data Protection Act also informing the data that we take from students, how we, how do we protect the data? What do we do? We are also uh, protect, we are uh, guided by that. The electronic transactions, the internet, and other resources that we use also protect us. And then we, like I said, we classify our, our information or the resources there into two, right? We have primary sources and secondary sources. So once you begin a research activity, you start with, you start with the uh, secondary sources where you read um, journals, you read encyclopedias, you read um, uh, periodicals, just to give you an understanding of the things that you are going to um, research on. Then having had some background, you move to the uh, primary sources, which are the law reports and the uh, other pieces of legislation, the laws themselves, right? So these are the steps that uh, you take. And we have this informing our organization of materials there. Of course, we have um, enactments, like I mentioned. We have uh, law reports. We have um, appeal cases. We have a King's Bench, Queen's Bench, uh, Admiralty, Probate, Exchequer, um, um, you know, Chancery reports, et cetera. But uh, I, I don't have the time. But when we come to the library, I, we can even discuss the evolution of law reports, how law reporting started, you know, way back during uh, Edward the First, you know, reign and how this has moved on up to today that we have different law um, reports and the importance and significance of law reports. We will learn that um, later. We have Hansard in the library. You know the role of Hansard. Hansard normally gives us background to debates. And so if you trace, normally the enactments come with the memorandum. But where you don't, you, can't, you don't find a memorandum supporting um, a, a, a particular law, you have to go through the Hansard to um, find that debate in case you need that. Then we have pamphlet collections in the library. You know, individual lecturers have pamphlet you know, collections there where they deposit their books, etc. The chapters of books for your um, reference. And then, of course, we have uh, rare books, legal encyclopedias, etc., etc general government publication. And of course, we have monographs. Monographs are textbooks. And textbooks are for secondary um, referencing. You know, you, you, you start from textbooks and then you narrow down to appropriate legislation that you need in order to 
um, achieve um, whatever you are looking for. Then we have um, post-first degree entrance exams questions. We also have regular semester-based exams past questions. So you, you have to come to the library and then access these materials in order to um, be abreast with lectures. And then the units of the library, we have reference, reader services, we have circulation, cataloging, a photocopy, um, current awareness services, like I mentioned, we try and uh, put information out there. Remember to create um, WhatsApp platforms and sometimes you put this on it when you have new information, we drop it there for you or you also drop in your requests um, through that. The ICT unit um, is also there and they are, responsible, they are responsible for Wi-Fi connectivity and the installation and training and maintenance of digital attorney. Digital attorney is a standalone database. So once it, it comes uh, with a fee, once you pay the fee, it will be installed on your laptop. You can access all the Ghana law reports, all the constitutional law cases and uh, um, conveyance in a property law, all the law cases, especially reported in Ghana law reports are available there. Sakai, Sakai is a learning um, platform which uh, assists um, students. Um, you know, um, lecturers pass on notes and other instructions which cannot be carried out in the um, classrooms, right? The lecturer uses the um, Sakai and the ICT unit is available there to help you retrieve information or get information from that platform. And then we have registration issues. If you are having registration issues, you come to the library, you come to the ICT um, unit. We have hardware and software issues. You can come over there and you'll be assisted. Students email activation. If you've not activated your email, you come over there, we assist you, activate that and flow. And then we have um, law reports. Like I said, we can look at the history of law reports, parts of a law report, which is, which is what I refer to anatomy of um, law reports. You know, you look at the, um, you, you look at the, um, the catchphrases, the, uh, uh, We'll do that in the library. Then we have online databases, high and online West law. When you come to the library, we we'll demonstrate how to use that. We are contemplating signing on to Dennis law and Judy law, but we've not yet um, finalized the agreement with them. The digital tone is available. It can be um, um, it's installed for you. And then the e-resources, I've mentioned that already. The UG Space Institutional Repository, the uh, research guides, I have talked about that, the uh, digitization. Currently, we are embarking on digitization. At least we are aiming to digitize at least 20% of the contents of the library. And we are, it, it is an ongoing exercise. And very soon, I will show you the site where a time will come, you, you just have to, you know, just go there and then download the information that letters want to give to you. And that will be that. It's going to be a seamless um, library where you can, you know, access the collection we put there at any time, anywhere. This is the, the page, our electronic library. This is the page. You can see there's a small dialog box there. You put in the query and the answers start coming up. I think very soon I'm coming to be asked to move. Then we have the research tools. When you come after this session, we have another um session in the library where we, we taught the various units of the library i will take you through um, law or judgments uh, law or judgment citators how they can be used to access information everything is there in the library law digest um, yearbooks and then most importantly tenetin tenetin is a software that helps to uh, measure or match the text of your project against uh, text on the, on the internet or online information. And it gives a sim similarity um, index, which helps us to decide whether you have plagiarized or not. This afternoon, I think a faculty member will take you through plagiarism and that can uh, help you. But we do the practical um, 
aspect over there in the library. So you, you bring your work and we subject it to the test of um, determining through the tenetine how much work, how much text you have plagiarized. And if normally, if it's above 20%, it is dangerous, it is not um, acceptable. But if it is below 20%, and if it is 20% and below, it is um, acceptable. I think I'll be drawing the curtains here for a few um, questions, comments, and maybe some concerns. And then later on, when you come to the library, at close quarters, we'll be, we'll be interacting and you can ask more questions on how you can effectively use the library. Thank you so much, and I invite your questions. Please, a round of applause for Mr. Joanta. Thank you very much. Please, you have, if you have any questions, just put it down. At the end of the session, we'll take it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, another round of applause for Mr. Joanta. Our next uh, address will be by by Ms. Hazel, and she'll be giving us a talk on the role of our academic advisors, and also uh, address us on the students with special needs. So let's give her a round of applause as she comes. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel Hazel, and this afternoon I'll be um, introducing you to the Welfare and Wellbeing Technical Working Group 5 of the law school. Now, as part of UG, schools, um, UG School of Law's vision to improve and enhance the experience of students at the School of Law, we have um, an institution called the Welfare and Wellbeing Technical Group, which is responsible for the welfare and well-being of staff and students. Our mandate is uh, basically to institute the Student Advisory Week, organize um, student dinners, lunches, expand um, existing scholarship, um, improve uh, course and lecture evaluation, among others. Now, the members of the technical working group five, that is the welfare and well-being group, is made up of um, Dr. Mantea, the chairperson, and today I'm just giving this talk on his behalf, Dr. Uh, Mr. Godwin Jokuto, Mr. Karij Asabagna, Ms. Mensa Bonsu. I know most of you had the privilege of meeting her yesterday, and myself. Now, in the law school, we have what we call the academic advisors. What we do is, for every one of you here, we're going to assign you an academic advisor. And that person is a lecturer, senior member of the law school. And the academic advisor is to help you uh, with your academics. If you have challenges, problems, anything related to your academics, you go and see your academic advisor for advice. And I would encourage you to take advantage of this special service that we have at the UG School of Life. And I assure you, you won't find any of this anywhere. No school, no faculty or institution has this special service where students meet their academic advisors and get advice for them. So once the list is out, send an email book an appointment and go and see your academic advisor who will help you with your academics. That's basically what the academic advisor is supposed to do, strictly academic advice. If there are other challenges that you experience once here, please um, see the members of the Welfare and Wellbeing Technical Group. Um, one of um, the members, Ms. Mensa Bonsu, Dr. Mantea, the others, you meet them once school officially begins. So we will help you in other areas not specifically related to your academics One, um, as long as you are in this school. 
So basically that is what the academic advisors uh, role is about. Um, every semester we have an ad academic advisory week. It's a week long program where we encourage um, students to meet their academic advisors. So please, once again, take advantage of this opportunity. You would come to realize that lecturers here are very kind and generous. But, uh, as long as you show respect, um, I'm sure they will be more than willing to assist you and help you in your academics. Here, nobody wants to see anybody fail. It's, uh, um, it will be a joy to see our students making it and excelling. So if you have challenges with your academics, as I said, see the, your academic advisor, the one that you are assigned to. And if it goes beyond academic, you, uh, academic sorry, you can see any one of us. So that is for um, students um, advisory week and academic advices. Another institution that we have at the law school is the um, representative for students with special needs. So um, for those of us with students with special needs, you uh, would have to register first with the OSSN at the Office of Students with Special Needs at the university. And then when you come here, to, you have somebody who represents students with special needs. What? And that office is um, headed by me and um, with um, Ms. Mensa Bunsu assisting me. What we do is to serve as a link between the university OSSN and then the School of Law to um, help with coordinating exams for students with special needs, bringing the attention of the needs of um, students with special needs to the faculty, just basically making it a little bit easier for students with special needs to um, sail through the law school without any difficulty. So if you have any special need, first register with the OSSN and then um, come see me as well. Um, well, as science is suspended and we're getting to know different kinds of ailments and diseases, as long as your condition or your need is medically certified, we would recognize it and then accommodate your needs at the law school. What do I mean by this? Let me give you an example. You know the traditional um, special needs of um, students. We have the visually impaired, we have the hearing impaired, we have the physical, uh, physically challenged. These are the traditional needs that we know, but then there are others as well. As long as you can get a medical certificate to establish that this is a need that must be accommodated, we'll do it for you. And what I mean by this is, let's say you go um, for tutorials and after your session, your lecturer or your TA tells you, you haven't understood the case. You didn't study, you have to go and study and you are upset because you spent time reading and you thought you understood it, but it turns out that you don't understand. So your mental health is in shambles. That is not a special need. Don't come to my office with that. That need can be resolved by going to the library. I'm not saying we don't recognize mental health diseases or anything like that, but as you must have heard yesterday, here you have to be strong, you have to be resilient, you have to be grounded. But anything um, which is medically certified would um, acknowledge it and then accommodate it. So I won't take much of your time. You'd get to know more about the um, office for students with special needs at the law school, as well as the technical working group five, which is the welfare and well-being. And also when we post the names um, of your academic advisors on the notice board. So in conclusion, please take advantage of the services that we are providing so as to enjoy your stay at the law school. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ms. Hazel. We really appreciate that. Please, a round of applause as she takes her seat. And like she said, please do well to take advantage of the resources that have been given to us. You cannot do law alone. You cannot do law alone. It's tough when you are alone. So do well to reach out. Our academic advisors are there to guide us, to aid us, take advantage of them. Next on our list, we have uh, a talk on the university and academic policies, and it will be given to us by Ms. Susie. Please, a round of applause as we welcome her. Um, the last speaker mentioned uh, mental health. Of late, this has become problematic everywhere in the university. When we say mental health, it doesn't mean that you are crazy or mad. But little, little things, stress and other things leads to mental health. What we have always said is that be one another's keeper. If you are in a class or a, especially when you are in same rooms at halls and blah, 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 you're studying your friends and when they have problems, when you see little changes in their characters and the uh, way they do things, please report quickly. This has been a, a problem with students lately. And if we don't uh, solve them early, it's, it, it, it escalates into something else. So that's my first. Um, advice for you or to you. Now, we'll talk about the financial aid. Um, I want to say that the school hasn't got a budget line for scholarships. And so if you have financial needs, the university has a student financial aid office. You may go there and apply for financial help or financial assistance. We also have Students Loan Trust Fund. You can also go there and apply for the loan. That one is given by government. And then after school, you work and then you pay. I'm emphasizing on this one because um, it seems we have lots of people coming to the school asking for financial assistance, but the school doesn't have item budget um, line for that. The students' financial aid and the students' loan trust fund will be able to assist in that regard. Also, in this university, the name that you come with, the name that you register with, that is the, uh, if you are Susie Naudacho Lamte, that is how we're going to call you. That is what we'll use in all your documents. You can't come back later and say you want to change names. And even the way they are written, it has to be same. So take note of that. If you have given us a name, that's the way we are going to go. You can't come back and say that you want to change. The university will not do that as a policy of the university. If you have made a mistake now, you better go back and then make corrections. Now, in the university, there are academic offenses and then non-academic offenses. Um, the academic offenses are to forge any other, to forge documents. Documents that um, Forge any documents, it's an academic offense um, uh, to impersonate, especially with this um, online programs, online teaching and things, and getting somebody to come and sit in or write your eye or do something for you is an offense. Using um, unauthorized, um, using unauthorized things 
whatever, anything that is unauthorized in the university is an offense. I'm talking about impersonation, um, uh, getting somebody to represent you, documents, four documents and stuff, they are all uh, academic offenses. Non-academic offenses, um, assault, threatening people, fighting, quarreling. If it comes to the administration that you have engaged or you are engaging in such, the university will deal with you. So please, don't assault, don't insult, don't threaten. Don't sexually abuse. The university has a policy on sexual abuse, and the university will deal with you if you are caught in any of these. Also, um, other um, residents, you are supposed to abide by all the uh, regulations. You are not supposed to. Okay, so when you go to the when you get to the resident, they will give you their uh, rules and regulations that you have to abide by. Um, we also have the whole tutors that you can, like they said, you have the academic, you have the academic advisors here at the schools, but at the halls you have the whole tutors. That any problem at all that you have, you can go to them. For me, I'm a hall tutor at Legon Hall. So if you find yourself at Legon Hall and you are on my floor, I am there to assist. Also, being the school administrator, any problem you have, you can come to us and then we'll help you. If it's academic, we can um, direct you to the academics to help you. But anything administratively or any other problems or issues, you can come and we discuss. But Please don't come with just anything because the office is very busy. Make sure that it is something that will have to help you and it is very um, something that you cannot or anybody cannot, your, your colleagues or your, uh, the, your, your union cannot help you, then you bring that one. The office is always open for you, but please don't just come in with trivial issues. So all these that I have said, you can find them on the university website. There's this, this book, this handbook, Regulation for Junior Members. You are called junior members. You have to read. And this university, nobody will tell you, do this, do, or don't do that. You have to read everything on the website. When you go to the website, you see um, uh, university policies. These and other policies are there to guide you. If you don't and you find yourself in any issue or problem, you'll be dealt with. So please be reading. You see that when you are walking around, there are notices about um, whatever you're supposed to do on most of the notice board. In the, um, in the faculties, the departments and elsewhere, please read. Nobody will sit you down and tell you. For sake of time, I can't, say, I can't say everything that is here, but you have to read. So please read and read why, so that you know the regulations, what you are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do. If you are not too sure, like I said, the office is there, my office is there, please come and then we'll guide you through whatever it is. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Susie. Lastly, we'll take a, uh, an address from Mr. Kenneth Gatte on examinations and plagiarism. Please a round of applause as he comes. Thank you, good afternoon once again. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, 
Dr. Kwekwe Nusin. He is the school examinations officer, and he's the uh, best best to explain to you details about examinations and plagiarism. But Ms. Lamte, the school administrator, has just already pointed out to you that as junior members of the university, you need to be familiar with the regulations for junior members. And uh, uh, section 11 of the junior member document, you can just Google it and you can download it in PDF version, even right uh, after this talk, and you can read it and be familiar with the content. As expected, you would take quite a host of examinations within the university. The examinations are not only limited to the final examinations at the end of your semester. All assessments are subject to the same requirements as examinations. Within your uh, junior members regulations, for example, it requires that you attend a minimum of cumulatively 25% of uh, contact period to be eligible for examinations. So if you decide that you don't like a particular class or that you are not a morning person, so you don't come in at uh, in the early morning for tutorials or anything of that sort, your lack of attendance can be the reason why you become ineligible for the exam. I should also, uh, I don't know what your, the structure of your grading system is at either the WASI, IBs, or IGCSEs level, but please become familiar with the university's grading system. In the University of Ghana, an 80 and above is an A. And so very often we have uh, first year students coming and are surprised that they have been awarded a D. And they are wondering, I did very well. Uh, the most, we've had some recent examples. Know where it falls so that you would know how well you are preparing for your examinations. It goes without saying, especially that as students of the University of Ghana and even more so law students, no cheating or collusion whatsoever will be permitted within the school. In fact, within any part of the university, no cheating or collusion will be permitted. We have experienced over the period that WASI students especially do not understand what amounts to cheating. So that if you and your law roommates decide to do the same assignment and discuss it with each other, and if it's a, to be submitted a printed assignment, and then one person puts their index number on the top, and then another person puts their index number on the top on the assumption that you did it together, and so you are submitting it together. You both score a zero. Unless it is a group assignment and the instructions are clear, you need to know what to do. In the university, your task, your, your presence here is for yourself. If exams will be announced, thankfully you are in a sort of a boxed in school of some sort, so that if you were in other departments, you would go to a, maybe a 40 page timetable pasted and you need to find the times and the venues for your examination. Nobody's going to send you reminders. But thankfully most in the law school, all our examinations are, are either in this building, in our examination center and very rarely across the street in the K. Buzia Hall. Much of it is left to you. Plagiarism. Uh, as part of the process to avoid pl plagiarism, meaning that in, in reporting or in providing written information for evaluation for your lecturers, that you do not just copy textbooks without um, referencing them. There's a whole writing training process which would help you to avoid these pitfalls. But if you write, you, it's not like the systems that you're used to. So that if we ask a question, you just open the textbook and then you think this is the answer and then you write it verbatim and you supply it to us. You have stolen the information and you have, and for that reason, you will be considered to have become, to have been academically dishonest. And as such, you would get a failed grade for the work. 
So if the idea is not coming from you and it's coming from an act of parliament or many of the other sources which you were introduced to in the library session, you need to reference properly. As part of Law 101, uh, Dr. Hammond will take you through a writing process. Uh, issues like essay writing, plagiarism will come up. So it's important that you pay very close attention to these things. In other parts of the university, people go to write exam and they have ink on their thighs and papers in their skirts and uh, some other things in their smocks. People have written formally in their, in their, in their collars and sleeves. I, I beg you, nobody's going to countenance this here. We would report you to the right authorities if you cheat an exam, and we will follow up to ensure that you are, you are punished. And the usual punishment is that you are kicked out of the university if it is clear that you intended to, to cheat. And nobody would be excusing things like, oh, I, I wrote a 20-page paper and I folded it in my pocket and I forgot the night before. So I brought it into the exam room. No, no such excuses. Uh, thankfully, we expect that we get the top of the Wasi cream to join us in this school. So if you have indeed um, got your seven A's and eight A's and six A's by your own merits, we don't expect that you'd be copying here. So please bear that in mind. But we are confident that you will, we would teach you well enough and you will well, learn well enough to avoid these pitfalls. So we don't expect it. It doesn't happen in this school, but we have to tell you, we don't expect that you would engage in cheating and other sorts, uh, forms of more practice. After this session, I encourage you to download the university examinations policy and the regulations for junior members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, do we have a question from the audience? on examinations, on plagiarism, on the resources of the library. Is there any question you would like to pose to any of our lecturers or resource persons present? There is none. Okay, so you can reach out. We've been spoken to about academic advisors. You can reach out to them. Before we close, Mr. Boydi, please do you have anything to add to? Okay, thank you very much, sir. So we've come to the end of our orientation. Like I said, it was a two day orientation and today's our second day. Gladly and gratefully, we've come to the end. I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, all of us for being present. I'd like to thank our Dean, Professor Raymond Atugba, Mr. Kenneth Gatti, I'd like to thank Miss Rachel Hazel, Miss Susie Lamte, Mr. Boydi, Mr. Joe Anta, and all other lecturers and honorable members of the University of Ghana School of Law present for their inspirational thoughts and guidelines for the journey for our law school. Another gratitude to our LSU executives. Uh, Organizer, Ms. Charlotte Owusu, our treasurer, Jude Doe, our secretary, Ms. Wilhelmina August, our vice president, Mr. Ransford Biney, and then our president, Mr. Jojo Afun. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of us here present, the students and those online for making this orientation a success. Uh, my name remains Ms. Bannerman. Welcome to the law school and have a fruitful academic year. Yes, please, Mr. Anta. Okay, so I've been, I've been informed that you have a library tour right after this. So do well to gather yourselves in front of the library and then you go for a very successful tour. Like I said, 
I'm Ms. Banaman. Welcome to the law. Welcome to the law and have a fruitful academic year. Let's take our closing prayer and then we can leave the premises. Our closing prayer from the very lady who gave us our opening prayer. Father, we thank you once again for a successful meeting and orientation. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for getting everything done by your will. We bless your name. We thank you once again. Amen. So thank you very much. And like I said, welcome to the law. Have a fruitful day, fruitful week. You are going for your tour in the library. So do all to stand in front of the library. It will be done briefly. And also, if you haven't registered, if you haven't registered, please, the treasurer is outside at the desk. Just see him, put down your name, and he'll give you further details on what to do. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>